Patrick Kane is one of the most dynamic forwards in the NHL. Hit the intro. Kane, Spinarama scores! Patrick Kane! Oh dear, an artful, exotic Spinarama. Kane moving in, backhand shot, he scores! He takes it himself and buries it. Basically dunks it into the net. He is widely regarded as the best American-born NHL player of all time. Let's quickly start things off with his background and his childhood. Patrick Timothy Kane II was born on November 19, 1988 in Buffalo, New York. He was born to Donna and Patrick and has three younger sisters. His father was a season ticket holder for the Buffalo Sabres and frequently took Patrick to games. They managed to sneak into a couple of iconic photos. At around age two, they snuck into this poster of Pat LaFontaine. And at age six, you can see them in the background of Sylvain Turgeon's pinnacle trading card. He even got to add his signature to the last piece of steel that went into the new arena that the Sabres were building at the time. Growing up, he was a big fan of Joe Sackick. Kane began playing hockey when he was seven years old, and he grew obsessed with it. His parents turned their basement into a mini rink, and he practiced every day. His hard work paid off when he was invited to join the Buffalo Saints, an elite tournament team assembled in Western New York. At the age of 14, Kane relocated to Detroit, Michigan to play for Honey Baked. He resided with former NHL player Pat Verbeek while living in Detroit, whom Kane regards as a mentor. He attended Detroit County Day School, but left before graduating to focus on hockey. After tallying 83 goals in his first season, he caught the attention of the London Knights of the OHL, who drafted him 88th overall. Let's briefly discuss his amateur career. Kane delayed his debut for the Knights for two years and instead played for the U.S. National Team Development Program. The NTDP were initially hesitant to recruit Kane based on his short stature, describing him in a scouting report as a little meek and still has the body of a 12-year-old. Kane went on to break the scoring record for most goals on the team set the previous season by Phil Kessel. After bulking up, Kane joined the London Knights the following OHL season. He registered 145 points and received the OHL Rookie of the Year Award and the M's Family Award for top scorer. The Knights later retired Kane's number 88 jersey in January of 2020. Time to talk about his NHL career and achievements. The NHL Central Scouting Bureau projected Kane as the number one North American prospect. In 2007, the troubled Blackhawks won the NHL draft lottery for the first time in franchise history, despite having just an 8.1% chance of doing so. The St. Louis Blues offered to trade the Blackhawks their ninth, 24th, and 26th overall picks in the draft in order to acquire Chicago's first overall selection. The Blackhawks declined and subsequently drafted Kane first overall. This historic pick, first time ever the Chicago Blackhawks have had the first pick, and we proudly select from the London Knights, the Ontario Hockey League, Patrick Kane. One month later, he signed a three-year entry-level deal worth $11,175,000. He recorded his first assist and a shootout goal in his second game. Two weeks later, he recorded his first NHL goal against the Avalanche. Kane's going down the slot. He's got the puck. Score! Oh, boy! Kane was named the NHL Rookie of the Month. He returned to Buffalo in December and was greeted graciously by his hometown fans. Patrick Sharp right in front. Kane scores! Oh, the Buffalo boy makes a sweet return! He finished the season as the highest rookie goal scorer, which earned him the Calder Memorial Trophy for Rookie of the Year. The following season, Kane and Jonathan Taze helped lead a rejuvenated Blackhawks team to the Stanley Cup playoffs. In the second round, he scored his first hat trick against the Canucks, though they were eliminated in the Western Conference Finals by the Red Wings. The following year would be unlike any other. In the final season of his initial rookie contract, Kane led the Blackhawks to the Stanley Cup Finals. And in Game 6, this happened. Kane, watched by Kimo Tiemann, to the net! And he stopped it! Where's the puck? It came loose on the other side. It's over! Patrick Kane has scored the goal! For a moment, Patrick Kane was the only person in the world that knew the Hawks won the Stanley Cup. It also made Kane the youngest player in history to score a Stanley Cup winning goal in overtime. That record previously belonged to Bobby Orr in 1970. He made the All-Star team the following season, but his numbers dipped the following year. 
some major controversy ensued, but we'll talk about that soon. During the lockout in 2012, Kane played in Sweden for EHC Beal alongside Tyler Sagan. Following the end of the lockout, Kane returned to action for the Blackhawks. They once again progressed to the Stanley Cup playoffs. In the Western Conference Finals against the Kings, Kane had the game of his life. Two on one, hustling back his point, upper shot, score! Patrick Kane in overtime! That goal advanced them to the finals against the Bruins. Kane contributed by scoring three goals, helping to defeat the Bruins in six games. He subsequently won the Conn Smythe Trophy as the Stanley Cup playoffs MVP. Injuries would hinder his performance during the 2014 and 2015 seasons. He recovered earlier than projected and returned to the Blackhawks at the start of the 2015 playoffs. Kane assisted on Duncan Keith's game-winning goal in Game 6 against the Lightning, securing his third Stanley Cup championship in six years. The following year, he led the league in scoring, winning the Hart Memorial Trophy, the Art Ross Trophy, and the Ted Lindsay Award. During the 2020 season, the Blackhawks appointed Kane as an alternate captain. And at the season's conclusion, Kane was named the best NHL player at the 2021 SP Awards. Kane racked up 45 points approaching the trade deadline in the final season of his contract. A blockbuster trade saw Kane sent to the Rangers, reuniting him with former teammate Artemi Panarin. He put up six points in the postseason, though they eventually fell to the Devils in seven games. After the season's end, he underwent hip surgery, making his future uncertain. Before we dive into how much he's made, let's briefly go over his international career. Kane debuted for the U.S. in the 2006 IIHF U18 Championships. He led the tournament in scoring and helped the USA win gold. He then played in the 2007 World Juniors, where the U.S. clinched the bronze. He represented Team USA in the 2010 Olympics, where the USA won silver. He represented the United States again in the 2014 Olympics, though he missed two penalty shots in a loss against Finland in the bronze medal game. In 2018, Kane was named the captain of Team USA for the 2018 IIHF World Championship. He led the tournament in scoring, helping Team USA to a bronze medal finish. Let's take a look at his recent contracts and brand deals. Kane has signed two major contract extensions with the Blackhawks since his rookie contract. In the final season of his rookie contract, Kane signed a five-year, $31.5 million contract extension with Chicago. The deal was announced simultaneously with contract extensions to both Taze and defenseman Duncan Keith, though that's nothing compared to his next contract. Wanting to keep Kane in Chicago, the Blackhawks signed him to an eight-year extension worth $84 million. And as we all know, with cash comes controversy, but we'll get there soon. His contract for the Swiss League was undisclosed, but he stated it was only enough to cover his insurance and a little extra, though he makes plenty from his endorsement deals with Bauer and Chevrolet. Now that we know how much he makes, how does he spend his cash? After signing his massive contracts, he managed to acquire some decent real estate. After signing his rookie contract, Kane bought a condo at the Trump International Hotel and Tower for $2.06 million. He then purchased a Hummer H2, which goes for $73,000. He needed somewhere to park it, so he paid another $130,000 for a parking spot at the Trump Building. In 2012, he purchased this lakefront home in Hamburg, New York. The house included a basketball court, in-ground pool, and boat launch, which is why it set him back $2.6 million. He then bought a condo at the Number 9 Walton in Chicago. The four-bedroom, 4,700-square-foot unit set him back $6.46 million. This made him neighbors with teammate Jonathan Taze and fellow Chicago athlete Jason Hayward. The luxury complex also features an indoor pool and virtual driving range, but that's nothing compared to the house he bought in 2023. He bought this mansion in Lake Forest. The five-bedroom house with an in-ground pool set him back $5 million. He's also been spotted wearing the Yacht Master 2, which costs $25,400. Peeking now into his personal life. Real quick, if you're liking this style video, make sure to comment who you want us to cover next. Before securing his rookie deal, Kane lived with Blackhawks general manager Stan Bowman. Kane comes from a very close-knit family, and his three sisters have long supported him throughout his career. Hey, Pat, you're doing pretty good out there. Thanks, Do you Jeff. think you can get a goal in every period and get a hat-trick for your sisters? Patrick Kane and Amanda Grahovec have been dating since 2012, and they have one child together. They got engaged in 2019. A decade earlier, he was featured as the cover athlete for EA Sports NHL 10. He was supposed to be featured again in 2016, but a controversy kept that from happening. We'll talk about that more in a moment. 
Later in his career, he was named in the 100 Greatest NHL Players list for the NHL Centennial Anniversary. He also enjoys golfing in his free time. Now for some moments that caused some waves in Patrick Kane's career. In 2009, Kane faced legal trouble when he and his cousin were arrested in Buffalo, New York. They were accused of assaulting a cab driver over a fare dispute. According to a police report, Patrick and his cousin James were arrested after a physical dispute erupted with the cab driver over 20 cents in change. The driver was given $15 for his fare. However, once the driver informed them that he didn't have exact change, he was repeatedly punched in the face by the duo before they stole the money back. Patrick Kane and his cousin pleaded guilty to a non-criminal charge of disorderly conduct and were ordered to send an apology to the cab driver. Another controversy occurred a couple years later. After a poor performance during the 2011-2012 season, Kane was criticized after photos surfaced showing him in an intoxicated state at a Cinco de Mayo party. Kane allegedly choked a woman who turned him down and was yelling anti-Semitic comments. Blackhawks GM Stan Bowman ultimately handled the matter with Kane privately. But this next incident is even darker. In 2015, a young woman accused Kane of raping her at his Hamburg house. The police executed a search warrant to gather evidence, though the accuser's mother was later caught tampering with evidence. The accuser then stated that she no longer wished to cooperate with the investigation because it caused her too much stress. Even though he was never charged, the accusation tarnished his career during those years and even resulted in him being replaced as the NHL video game cover athlete. His only on-ice controversy came after slashing Nick Ritchie. He was fined $5,000. Now at this point, you must be getting excited about his net worth. It's unsure if Patrick Kane will sign any other major contracts, so his career earnings probably won't rise drastically. Having said that, his total career earnings to date are $115,637,195, and he has amassed a total net worth of $28 million. Thanks for watching.